Today, we're gonna take a look at who I believe is the most underrated center in history. And he probably also had the most underrated NBA career ever, Moses Malone. Unfortunately, I was too young to watch Moses play live, but I watched so many highlights and games of him with the Rockets and Sixers, and I'm convinced he's criminally underrated. When people talk about the greatest centers in history, Moses Malone is always an afterthought. It's always about guys like Kareem, Wilt, Russell, Shaq, Hakeem Olajuwon, David Robinson, and even Patrick Ewing. I'm not knocking them as they definitely deserve the recognition, but I believe Moses is just as good or maybe even better than some of those guys I mentioned. Let me just start off this video with this stat line. 31.1 points per game and 14.7 rebounds per game, which also includes 7 offensive rebounds per game, on 52% from the field. That was his season average for his 1981-82 season where he also won the MVP. For his career, he averaged 20.3 points per game and 12.3 rebounds per game on 50% from the field. Now, he wasn't a great passer and defensively, he was nowhere near guys like Bill Russell or Hakeem Olajuwon, for example. But he was just so ridiculously good at scoring and rebounding while also being a career 76% free throw shooter, which is amazing for a center and higher than all of those guys I mentioned earlier. Additionally, he was also a 13-time All-Star, 8-time All-NBA, and 3-time MVP. The only centers in NBA history with more MVP awards than Moses were Russell, Wilt, and Kareem. Let's take a break from stats for a bit and just watch what he did on the court. Moses was a beast and played in a way that we've never seen from anyone else before. He wasn't that big, being listed at only 6 foot 10 inches tall. For a center who played in the 80s, he was actually pretty undersized, yet he was dominating guys much bigger than him. Throughout NBA history, centers are usually put into different categories. You have finesse centers like Kareem or Hakeem, strong power players like Shaq or Ewing, or defensive anchors who do everything. However, Moses did not specialize in any of these categories. He was bullying people in the paint, but he also had an incredible basketball IQ. He studied angles and positions to put himself in the best spot to grab offensive rebounds. Sometimes, he would just throw up a bad shot on purpose just so he can grab the offensive rebound and get into a better position to score the ball. While many other centers before him were great rebounders, Moses turned rebounding into a form of art. Before he arrived to the NBA, rebounding was the most boring part of the game to watch for most people. He was the pioneer who made it exciting and nowadays we always root for players who are great rebounders. Because it's fun to watch. As of today, nobody has been able to replicate his style of play. Guys like Charles Barkley and maybe Andre Drummond are probably the most similar, but even they can't compare to the gracefulness of Moses. So statistically, Moses had his best seasons in Houston, but his most memorable moment was when he decided to team up with Dr. J and the 76ers in the 1982 offseason. Before the start of the 1982-83 season, Moses was asked about his prediction for the upcoming season. And he replied, fo fo fo, implying that they would sweep everyone on their path to a championship. Also, just a note, back then, if you finished as the first or second seed in your conference, then you would only have to play three rounds in the playoffs. When the 1983 playoffs began, Philadelphia clinched the first seed in the East with a 65-17 record. And Moses' prediction was starting to come true. Led by him, Dr. J, and Andrew Toney, the Sixers dominated everyone in the playoffs, although they did lose one game in the conference finals against the Bucks. They reached the finals for a rematch against the Lakers, who defeated them in the previous year. But this time, with the addition of Moses, the Sixers swept them easily. Moses destroyed the Showtime Lakers with averages of 26 points and 18 rebounds per game. He scored the most points and controlled the glass for the entire series, grabbing over twice as many rebounds as anybody else on either team. This was one of the most dominant individual performances in finals history. And he did it against arguably the greatest team of the 1980s. Additionally, Moses helped Dr. J win his first and only NBA championship, cementing both of their legacies in the history books forever. Another interesting fact about Moses is that from 1978 to 1989, he made the All-Star team for 12 consecutive seasons. 
However, he was also on four different teams during this period, yet he was still able to keep his streak going, which was crazy. This shows how every time he joined another team, he was able to instantly fit in and produce. His type of playstyle is very easy for his teammates to adapt to because he pretty much does his own thing and doesn't get in anyone's way. And even when Moses was struggling at times to score, his rebounding was always top notch. He never averaged less than 11 rebounds a game in any of his all-star seasons. And he led the league in rebounding for 6 seasons. After a great 4 seasons in Philadelphia, the team wanted to transition to a new era with their young up-and-coming star Charles Barkley. So they traded Moses to the Washington Bullets in 1986. He ended up playing for the Hawks for a while too and then bounced around a few teams during the twilight of his career. Even though Moses got traded a lot and played for many different teams despite being a legitimate superstar in his prime, he never complained at all. He was a first class professional who played within his role and never took any of it personally, which is why he was so well respected among his peers. In his final game of his career in 1995, Moses was on the Spurs and actually hit a near full court buzzer beater. <laughs> that was a really cool way to retire. After an amazing career, Moses was inducted into the Basketball Hall of Fame on his first year of eligibility in 2001. Moses continued to live his quiet and reserved life. He was never a person who made much noise to the media or made himself the center of attention. When there's no news at all about Moses, it's usually good news because it meant he was enjoying life to its fullest without anyone bothering him. Unfortunately, on September 13th, 2015, Moses passed away in his sleep at the age of 60. The cause of death was due to heart disease as his heart has been an issue for him in the years leading up to it. His death caused a massive reaction from everyone on social media. Former players, reporters, and even current players were stunned. They all mourned his death, offered prayers, and recognized him as one of the greatest players of all time. Just look at all these responses after his death. It's really clear that all of them respected Moses so much, which was exactly how it was during his playing career. And it's gonna continue to be that way because that's how amazing of a player and person he was. Those guys, when he focuses on something, you know, that's it. That was as great a year as I've seen him play the path. He was so dominant. Moses is singularly the greatest influence in my NBA career. I call him dad. And that was the story of Moses Malone, the most underrated center in NBA history. Sorry if the audio isn't up to par, but I'm still messing around with the settings on this new mic, so bear with me. Thanks for watching everyone, hope you enjoyed the video, and I'll see you guys next time.